Okay, I will tell you right now that women absolutely love this haircut. It doesn't matter if your hair is thick, thin, curly, fine, stick straight, super coarse, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what length your hair is. This is the layering technique that I approach over 99% of my haircuts behind the chair, and it's the one that I've used for the past over quarter of a century. It kind of is the simple way to avoid all of the major concerns. So if you've ever had a situation where your hair, you felt like it was overlayered, maybe it felt too thin, maybe you felt like your hair is thin and you could never have layering because it would make it look even thinner. Maybe your hair is too choppy after layers. This is gonna help you address all of those things. So if you're a stylist, this is a very simple walkthrough that's gonna give you my step-by-step -step process on how I approach all of these haircuts. But if you're not a stylist, don't run away. I got you covered. This is going to help you understand better how to avoid the simple mistakes, the common mistakes that lead you into a position where you hate your hairstyle. So it'll help you to explain to your either current stylist or your new stylist the way that you want to approach your hairstyle, or you could even just show them the video and give them a better insight as to what you want from your hair. And this is my wife. Say hi, Diana. Hi. You didn't say hi, Diana. I know, I, I usually do. <laughs> and we are going to take this hair and make it shorter in the middle of Joshua Tree, in an Airbnb, and uh, with no mirrors. And I'm gonna pray that I get it even because if I don't get it even, you're gonna hear about it a lot. Yay for me. So, with all that said, should we dive in and pray that I do this right? Yes. Yes, we should. <laughs> Let's do that now. Okay, the very first step, I told you this works for any length. So the first thing we're gonna do is determine what length we actually want her hair to be. Now, Diana has already told me that she wants her hair to be, well, show them, Diana, actually, I'll um, let you do it. About right, right in here. We're kind of going for these photos, and yes, I've blurred out the faces because I don't know if I can use them, but this is the hairstyle. So this is the kind of general area that we're trying to land with this particular cut. So now that we figure that out, I'm actually gonna have Diana stand up so I can cut the length to the length that she wants. This isn't something that we have to do in the salon all the time. I, most of the time, actually don't do this, but the reason that I'm doing it today is mainly because it actually does a really good job of helping you get the line straight. That's an important thing for me today. Many times if you're sitting in a salon chair and you cross your legs, your shoulders are gonna be a little bit dipped one side or the other. Or maybe when you sit down, you just have a tendency to lean to one side a little bit more. That can mean that when that length is cut even, all of a sudden you stand up and it's a tad bit uneven. So I like to have people stand up, go ahead and stand up. I like to have her stand up, come back this way, turn the mic, actually turn around like this, right? I'll have her stand up, turn around for you guys. And what I would do is just actually comb it down and take the length off while she's standing. And she just stands square normally. Then we can cut a straight line and it'll be a little bit more appropriate. We know that it'll be straight. So I'll have you do that right now. And I like to actually start from the outside moving to the center so that it doesn't actually do this and get really uneven. So I will actually comb it down. I'll have you look down just a tiny bit. I'll section this, get some of the hair out of the way so I can get a nice clean cut. Just take a smaller section to the back of the ears from the occipital bone to the back of the ears for stylists if you're watching. If you're a stylist, you can use clips on this part if you like. I prefer to just comb it in front of the ears and kind of use the ears or the shoulders as a clip. It makes it a little bit easier for me, it's a little faster but there's nothing wrong with using clips. Then okay. comb the rest down. Okay, now that we've had the length cut to hopefully close to the right length for her so she doesn't yell at me too much, um, now we start with the front layer. So I always move from the length to the front layers. And then the next step after that will be the actual internal layers, or what I call the top layers or the side layers, all the other layering that you see. So one of the things that Deanna mentioned is that she wants the layers in the front to start around her jawline or longer, nothing shorter than that. We're gonna start there. So usually what I do at this point is it's really basic. I'll take a section from the top of the head to the top of the ear, and I section that out right to the, actually right to the back of the ear. So it's kind of the top of the, the top of the ear, but right behind the ear is where the actual section goes to. And then you can move all this stuff out of the way, 
and then you're just dealing with the very front and that's the front layer. So that's all of the stuff that could be layered in the front. Now, all you're doing at this point is it's really basic. All you're doing is determining how much of it, how short do you want this piece in the front? So we know that we want to start at our jawline. So we're going to start down here. And then how much layering do you want? So we know that this right here is the length that we can't take any shorter because that is our actual length. So as long as we just take this and go, okay, we've got this length. Now, do we want them this long in the front, this long in the front, this long? And we just move that up until we get to the right length. And then we're just going to draw a line. Now, if we want less layering, maybe you want more like a bob shape haircut where you want this length in the front a little bit of that line. That just means that you start that section a little more forward and you just take maybe it from right here and you leave all of this stuff back so that you're only layering a little bit. So any way you want to do it is fine either way, but you just don't go beyond the hair behind the ear. You just don't layer any of that. As long as we stay away from that, we're not going to get too much layering or too much of a disconnect or looking too much kind of like a mullet, unless you want a mullet, then, then you know, now you know how to do it, but you're going to avoid all of the massive concerns that happen with front layers. It's really basic. So she does want to keep most of this length. She doesn't want a lot of layers in the front. So I'm just going to start those layers a little bit farther forward so that we don't layer quite so much. And we leave this, what she sees as the length. We leave that length so that we don't cut too much. So I just do the same on the other side. So it's just a little bit. And then all I'm going to do is just basically draw a line from here to there. So we'll just take this and we go, okay, my starting point is her jawline right here. So if I come in and start longer, now I've got some tension on this, I'm pulling it down. So I'm going to start longer knowing that it's going to cinch up. So I'm going to start down here and I'm just going to slide my shears down and just do some light layering in the front that ends at that longest point without cutting it. Worst case scenario, it's too long. We can always take it shorter, much harder to put it back. Do the same thing on the other side. I've got an assistant here that you guys can't see, but he's a hundred pounds furry and his name is Kevin the Burner. And he's right under my feet right now, not making things easy. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'm starting, I'm not even combing this down. I am just holding it and free cutting this. Down into the layers, or I also have the ability to start from the bottom and work my way up. Either way, whatever's easy and comfortable for you, I choose to kind of go at it both ways sometimes. Okay. So now we have some very light layers in the front and I can always take those shorter if I want to take those shorter. Let me do check these though. Make sure they're somewhat even since I have no mirror to look at. Okay, so. Now, one, part, one important part that I didn't mention about this that I should have is that I have it parted where she's going to part it. Now, if you're a person that flips your hair back and forth, in the layering in the front, what you would ideally do is actually part your hair to cut the layers in the center. This allows it to have a little bit more evenness no matter what side you go to. If you part your hair always over here, for instance, or if we cut it over here, and then you're constantly parting your hair on this side, it's going to be very uneven and kind of heavy on one side when you try to part it at home. So if you're parting it down one side all the time, you part it exactly where you part it, then you cut the layers so that everything looks right as it hangs normally. And if you're flipping it back and forth, you use a center part, part it straight down the center, and then cut those even, and then it's gonna be mildly off on both sides, but really not a big deal. All right, now we move into the internal or the top layers. This is where the magic happens. When new clients call my salon, this is exactly what happens. Hey, I need to make a hair appointment. Oh, well, tell me what's going on. I just don't like my hair, it's not working right. Really? Okay, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on already. Why don't you go ahead and come on in and we'll talk about it. Oh, okay, cool, sounds good. Because these are the common mistakes that always happen. And if you follow this particular layering technique, you'll never make those mistakes. This keeps you from being able to make those mistakes. So this is how we do it. I will section the head off. So we'll take a section from the top of the head to the back of the ear again. Okay, that is one section. So we have our front and then we have our back, okay? Just like this. Then in the back, I will take what we call pie sections. It basically just means diagonal or kind of pie-shaped sections. They look like this, right? And what I'll do is I'll take a starter section in the very crown here in the very back, and I'll take a small little kind of pie section that starts at the part line, and I'll pick the hair straight up. Now what's gonna happen is in the back, the hair at the occipital bone, so that bump in the back of your head where your hair head indents right here, 
all of that hair, we're gonna pull that up. The top layers are not gonna go any shorter than that. Can they go shorter than that? Yes, there's always exceptions to the rule. But if you wanna be safe and you know that you wanna steer yourself away from any of the common concerns, you don't cut the layers on the top any shorter than that. We will pick this up and I will, everything below that I will allow to drop out of the head. I won't even touch that. It won't even be in this section. Then we'll pick this up and what's gonna happen is the hair that comes from directly above that, that hair right here, that length, this becomes the guide to how short we can cut these layers. So I know that I need to leave them longer than that, but as long as they are longer than that, we're good. Depending on how much layers you want. If you want a little bit of layers, you leave it a lot longer. You don't take much off. If you want a lot of layering, you go as short as that piece of hair is. Again, just don't go shorter. One thing I would say, and this is not always, this is a rule of thumb I like to follow and it tends to work best. Usually speaking, the layers in the back should be no shorter than the layer in the front. So for her, we know that this is at the chin. Right? So I don't want to take those any shorter than the chin. If you take them shorter than the chin, what can happen is all of these shorter hair will push that hair forward and you'll end up looking like you've got these kind of dog ears in the front. It would look very thick right around the front pieces. It'll kind of look like you have a bob that goes like this. Then you have all this other hair that just kind of hangs there. So as long as they're longer than that front layer, they'll blend nicely and you won't have a problem. So we're gonna pick this up and I'm gonna start a little bit on the longer side just to be safe. And then we'll take it shorter as we feel need to take it shorter. Another thing that I'm doing is I always do what we call in the salon point cut. So I always cut into the hair. I don't cut it blunt like this. Now the reason for that is because it tends to always blend better when you cut into the hair than it does when you cut up blunt. If you cut up blunt, you're forced to take out a line. So if you've had your hair layer in the past and you saw a lot of choppiness to it, that very well may be why, especially if your hair is thick or coarse. If your hair is thick, coarse, or has some wave to it, and it's thick and coarse especially, and you cut it blunt, you are absolutely gonna see choppiness in that layering, which I'm gonna show you at the end how we kind of avoid that or how we erase that, if you will. But a good way to start by not even putting it in is just by point cutting it like this versus blunt cutting it. So point cut that, got a little bit of layering in the back. Now I'm gonna start, take another little pie shaped section we talked about, pick that straight up, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. Point cut into this. Okay, now when we get to the side of the head, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what we call vertical section. So I'm just gonna take a section that goes right to the back of the ear, like we already parted that off, and I'm gonna take another one right next to it, maybe an inch or half an inch forward, and then I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick that hair up, everything below, so this recession, we draw a line that goes back to her, her occipital bone, back here. Everything below this, I'm going to allow to fall out of the hair, so I'm not gonna actually layer that or cut that any shorter. It's gonna help me avoid doing that little thing where you cut these little holes or you see some thinness over here. It looks really scraggly at the bottom. It's gonna take all of that concern out. This is how I can tell you that if you've got fine or thin hair, this technique can actually make your hair look thicker because what helps your hair look thicker is a strong, what we call a strong baseline, meaning this hair down here. If I'm not layering any of this stuff, you're still gonna have a lot of hair and strength down there or as much as you currently do for the most part. There are certain situations where one length will look denser, but I'm talking with a broad stroke here. And for most people that even have thinning hair, if we layer it in this manner, your hair will look thicker. It can actually handle it because it avoids being over layered and making your hair look thinner. So now I'm going to take this little section and I'm going to pick this straight up. Again, so you can see I'm letting all that stuff fall out. I'm going to pick all this straight up. And I'm just going to do the same thing and take that length out, okay? So I'll turn it like this so I can actually cut it and not have it all going around. Okay, and again, point cutting into it versus cutting it blunt, okay? So this is leaving me her length, but still allowing me some layers and it's still gonna look thick and dense at the bottom. I'm gonna do the other side and we're almost done with the layering. We've got one little final thing that we'll finish up after we actually drier hair, but as far as the preliminary cut, we're basically gonna be done at this point. So it's fast, it's efficient, and it's super safe. That's what I love about it. And again, it will work at any length range you have. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dry her hair, 
Then after it's dried and styled, I'm gonna show you how I texturize those ends a little bit to make it blend even better, not over texturize it so it doesn't look too thin. And if you've ever had choppiness, this is how you're gonna erase those choppy layers. You can literally do this at home if you have any sort of texturizing shears. So I'm gonna get our hair dry and then uh, we'll come back. So give me one second. Okay, now that we have our hair round brushed and mildly dried and kind of partly finished, I'm gonna show you an absolute game changer. Oh, and if you wanna see the video on actually how I style this or why I use the particular blow dryer that I used while I was styling this and the round brushing method just to get it dry and smooth so you don't damage your hair. If you're watching this video the week it's going live, then you will see that video next week. However, if it's been a little bit, there'll be a link below that you can check that out. Either way, there'll be a link below probably. So go below and find it. You'll find it then. So either way for next week or look below. And if you see the link, there's a the video. Check it out. So let's, let's dive into this. The way I finish a haircut every single time is after I've basically styled it or got some sort of dryness and movement into it, I'll go through and I basically take the exact same sectioning that I did when I cut the hair originally, when I layered it, and I'll pull it up. And all I do is look at the very ends and if they look too blunt, I'll take these shears, texturizing shears, and I just texturize the very tips. So what this is key in this, to make sure that we don't over texturize, is I only do the last about inch of hair. I don't go below that. And I just very quickly just kind of break up those ends, take out any sort of lines. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go all the way up. And if there are any lines in here or just looked a little bit uneven, I would just take out some of those lines at the very ends. What this is gonna do is it's gonna blend all your layers in. So when you comb your hair down, you shouldn't see choppiness. It'll be with very nice blended layers. It lightens up bulk. So if you feel like your layers are really heavy for some reason, this is a great way to get rid of some of that bulk without taking off too much length. It will feel a very tiny bit shorter. So be aware of that, but not dramatic by any stretch and it works magic on here. So see, there's some, kind of a little bit of thickness and bluntness to the ends of that. So just lightly go through and just texturize those very ends. Now what happens when things go wrong? It's because people go too far down and they start texturizing too much down here and then it looks really thick down here and it starts to look really thin up there. But I like to texturize just the very ends because it allows me to get a lot less bulk at the ends and a lot less Bluntness at the ends, meaning there's no lines, meaning it blends well. And I legitimately, like I said, I literally do this on every single client. So you can see in here, we have a lot of movement and layers, a lot of texture in her hair. I could even take these layers a little bit shorter, but if I comb her hair down like this, straight and flat, you're not gonna see a bunch of choppiness in here. You don't see a bunch of lines, horizontal lines through there because it's all blended. So even though we have layers in there for movement, and texture, we don't get the blunt, choppy layers and it still looks dense and thick and full. It gives her some nice movement and texture. And now we're gonna get some curl in this or wave in this and then we'll come back and show you the finished result. Sound good? Sound good? I like it. I like it, all right. Okay, and now we are back with some wave in her hair. I did not show you the process of how we waved her hair. Uh, she just used a curling iron it actually because I've got multiple videos that I walk you through all of that process so you can go and check out. I'll link a couple of them in the description box below so you can find them. But nonetheless, as you can see, we have wave, we have style, we have layers, and in the profile, you can see that there's still a lot of movement and texture to these, but nowhere does it look thin or choppy or any of the things. So yes, now the question is, did all that make sense? Did you tell them about follow, how to follow our journey? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we are journeying around. We are actually looking for a place to call home. So we are currently living in a van, driving around the United States, trying to find that specific home for ourselves. So if you want to check that out, you're going to go ahead and follow the links below too. We've got Instagram pages to follow this dude and us, as well as another YouTube channel. Where we'll be sharing all of this stuff. So check that out right now. There was. I'm hot. This window is hot behind me. <laughs> so we're going to leave now. I'm going to turn the AC back on. So bye. Bye. Bye.